All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM joining you from lovely, sunny San Diego. And today I'm joined uh, from probably an equally sunny, hopefully Hawaii by Lane Kawaoka. How are you doing, Lane? Hey, thanks for having me, John. Aloha. Aloha. It's pretty sunny there, is it? Yeah, yeah, it appears that way. Um, not at the beach yet, but um, yeah, 80, 86, 87 probably. Just very similar to San Diego, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. Well, it is, apart from the fact that half the beaches are closed, but there, there you go. <laughs> um, so, um, Lane, today you own three 3,200 units. You're a writer for Forbes, Top 50 Investing Podcast, Amazon Bestseller. Um, so let's talk about passive um passive income right so what would you advise our audience today who are probably you know probably got 401ks you know probably dabble a little bit in the stock market what else should they be looking at from a, an income point of view and an investing point of view yeah so i invest in real estate um i don't flip houses i don't wholesale yeah. anything i don't unclog to toilets i buy and hold <laughs> uh rental properties that uh cash flow and um, mm -hmm. when you do that, you create um, many income streams for you to kind of live off today, as opposed to the traditional wealth building, which I don't think is correct, which is hope and pray that your stocks go up in value and you can uh, get a big nest egg to hopefully withdraw off in your old days. So what are some of the way, um, some people will say, okay, yeah, I've heard of this before, rental property sounds like a great idea, but... It just seems like it seems complicated. I don't really know how to get into it. Um, I, I wouldn't really know what to do. What's your advice for people like that? Is it as difficult to get into as some people think? Yeah, yeah. So let's you know, let's break it down, right? Like yeah. you know, you're buying properties that you can pay a professional property manager mm -hmm. to do all your dirty work for you. So you're not getting, you know, you're not unclogging toilets. You're not calling up um, people late in the night to fix something for you. Um, and to do that, you know, you're going to have to buy properties at cash flow. So the rents that you bring in are much more and exceed all your expenses and your capex and, right. and staff. And so, how does somebody go about starting to assess what what might be a good what 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 are the criteria for a good property? Yeah. So one of the first places you begin is the rent to value ratio. So the rent to value ratio is you take the monthly rent divided by the purchase price. And what you're looking for is something 1% or higher. At that point, you kind of know you're going to cash flow. It's just a quick and dirty way of, of doing it. So, you know, we'll, we'll typically buy places, um, single family homes at $100,000 a piece that'll rent for $1,000 a month. So that's 1%. Um, and I, I hate to uh, pop people's bubble, but if you live in a primary market like San Diego, Los Angeles, I lived in Seattle at one time, Hawaii, New York. It ain't gonna work. No bueno. Right. You're not gonna find one percent rent to value ratios. Um, I mean, I'm sure you can, but they'll be in war zone areas. We, we right. don't go after war zone areas. <laughs> so what what kind of what kind of locations would you be looking for? Right. So we're looking for secondary and tertiary markets. So places like Birmingham, Atlanta, Indianapolis, Kansas City, Memphis. Um, these are all the less sexy places, mm -hmm. right? And, and these places have, you know, you can buy good solid houses for a hundred grand and right. to, to pretty decent people. And then, and then how do you, how do you find the right property manager to look after it? I mean, cause there's a lot of property management companies obviously out there. How do you figure out who's the best one for you? Yeah, you're exactly right. I mean, some of the worst places to go is like your typical big brokerage houses. And um, hopefully I can say this on air, but like, you know, mm -hmm. we all know them, like the Century 21s, the mm -hmm. Remaxes, right? Because, I mean, follow logically with me here. It, those guys are the guys who can't sell houses and you don't want them to be the ones, you know, in the trenches for you managing your property. So the way of, of finding who to work with is mostly by referral. Right. Um, you know, kind of within my group, we, we kind of run a close group of, you know, uh, investors and we kind of share good referral sources. So that's how it kind of starts. You know, I don't work with anybody unless they've been referred to me. Right. And then and then so um, so you find the market, maybe you find the right kind of property. How do you assess that it is the right kind of property for you? Yeah, so a lot of the stuff that we'll buy is like they're commodities, right? If the numbers mm -hmm. work and there's a big buffer and margin for error, you no, know, we're in. 
right? Mm-hmm. And and you kind of learn from there and you kind of tweak your your buying box and your buying criteria off of that. But um, you know, we're buying in, you know, B class houses in decent areas. They're not in the best school districts. I mean, that's right. they're not the prettiest houses, but somebody will the the glut of the population out there is looking to rent houses like this good right. value properties and obviously given the fact that we're in a we're in a strange world right now with the with the crisis um i presume it's probably bodes well for the rental market right i mean it, when times of trouble people get foreclosed out of their houses and what do they do they become best customers for us mm. right right so would you say that this, you know, everybody may be a little distracted right now, but would you say this is a pretty good time for people to start looking at, uh, at getting into this uh, rental market? Best time than ever. I mean, I, I've been telling a lot of people lately, like, see, I told you all that <laughs> mutual funds and stocks, it's all fake money. I mean, what you mm-hmm. want is you want to buy real assets that more importantly, they cash flow for you every month. And, you know, I'm not a big proponent for buying properties in primary markets like you and I live. Sure. I mean, great places to live, but I wouldn't buy rental properties there. I mean, yes, the appreciation potential is great, but um, you know, I prefer not to gamble with my money. I, I want mm-hmm. the sure thing, which is month after month cash flow. Yeah, and I guess, and that's the thing. Uh, and then, how do you? I mean, I so you I mean you want month after month um, cash flow, but then say somebody would say, okay, but you can't really guarantee that, can't you? I mean, keeping somebody keeping your properties rented all the time. Right, right. Well, I mean, a lot of times the the national occupancy is in the high 90%. And Mm -hmm. if you have a a vacancy, maybe it's a problem with your property manager and you need to just drop the price a little bit. Now, I know like, I mean, just take a property that rents for a thousand bucks. If you drop that thing down to 950, your Craigslist or your Facebook marketplace ad will blow up. Um, I I mean, people need a place to live and there's a housing shortage. Um, and, and I think that's why a lot of um, higher net worth investors, especially accredited investors, they enjoy syndication deals, uh, private mm-hmm. placements where you'll buy into a maybe a two or three, 400 unit apartment building and you can get diversification that way. Well, that's a yeah, that's a that's an interesting one. So, yeah, so syndication buying buying into something and then you're kind of sharing the risk a little bit, too. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You know, you're kind of able to underwrite that one property, walk the block, and see if it's the right investment for you, and you feel comfortable with it. And then um, you pull together with different investors and diversify your risk. And so, uh, so for what's the what is the overhead in terms of the amount of time and energy you got to invest in something? If if you go and find a, a property in the right market and you get it, you get it good property manager how much work do you have to put in after that well i mean if you're talking a syndication deal there's zero work there you know i mean putting any loans in your name but you know i think you, you kind of alluded to earlier people have heard this before right i mean in terms of passive investing the brand of investing i do where you're picking up a turnkey rental yeah. something that's been fixed up for you i would say you know you're probably looking at maybe a few hours uh, a month if things are going pretty well, you know, it, maybe you might have a, a break in the plumbing system and, you know, that's right. just simple email out to her and phone call out to your property manager to keep them accountable, you know, remote management. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but it really isn't too bad um, at the end of the day. You know, it's passive investing. I, I tell my clients if they're spending more than, a, you know, five hours a month doing this stuff, they're doing it wrong. <laughs> Right. <laughs> and then does it, um, I mean, if you then, like you have, if you then start to buy multiple properties, does that, does that, does that five hours become 10 hours, 15 hours, 20 hours, or does it, or not? I would say you start to get a, a little bit of scale and, you know, you're mm. only, you're only managing one relationship in terms of a property manager. Right. Um, you know, back in 2015, when I owned 11 rentals by myself and I had a property manager, and I was having an eviction or two every year and some mm-hmm. kind of bigger issue like the HVAC getting stolen or breaking right. or, you know, like the plumbing going down into the basement, you know, once a quarter where for 11 properties. So you can kind of get a sense of, you know, your level of involvement. But I would say, you know, for the most part, it's um, if you get a good property, you may not even hear, hear from them. 
Right. And I guess, uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's obviously, you know, the, the, the ideal situation. And again, as you said, I mean, if you're in these, if you're in the secondary or tertiary markets, I mean, you're not in the best area, but you're not in a bad area. You're in a, you know, a solid kind of area. Uh, I mean, the really, it really not that much should go on. Right. Right. And, and that's why you're trying to diversify your holdings. Mm -hmm. You're trying to go into yeah. multiple markets and multiple houses. So therefore, obviously, I mean, if you have um, if you have multiple units or whatever, then if you have a problem somewhere, you're offsetting it by the others where you're not having a problem. Right, right. And that's why you invest with cash flow. So you can kind of build up those cash reserves. So when something does break or something unexpected happens and, you know, your tenant has to move out overnight, mm -hmm. you have that cash reserves to kind of backfill it and bridge the right. gap. So um, as we come to the end of our time, um, Lane, so you would you would definitely advise people that this is a good time to to get into the rental market and get into uh, generating passive income. I mean, a lot of people obviously are going on to their 401ks now and seeing that the 401ks that were going like that are now going like that. And uh, and all this, as you say, this this paper money that they were able to look at online has all disappeared right now. So would you argue this is a really good time to get in? I think now is the time as any, right? A lot of times it takes pain to make mm -hmm. a change. Yeah. I mean, it, it's hard for me to argue when people's stock market prices are going up and up and up. I mean, sure. I'm sure. I mean, everybody thinks that they're the smartest person in the room. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I prefer to invest in things where I have control over and I understand. And um, the reason I don't, I, I took out my 401k probably about five years ago and I never looked back. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of that stuff, in my opinion, is just the Wall Street roller coaster where only the Wall Street firms and financial planners get rich off our backs. Yeah. yeah. But the reality is with, with your with your you know passive income, as you say, I mean, instead of just going online every month or so and looking at your your digital paper money up there, you're actually getting real income coming in through the door. Right, right. And I'm not gonna say this is like, you know, super easy, right? Not mm -hmm. this is not easy. And this is not a get rich quick thing. Mm -hmm. But it, it if you do it the right way and you surround yourself with the right people, it is very simple. I and mean, that's why my the URL is simple passive cash flow. I try and make it very simple for people so they can get started doing this and then you know kind of grow their portfolio slowly but surely. Yeah. So I mean that's a good point though to make is uh, so when do, how how long does it normally take, do you think, for you to start seeing start seeing a good return? I mean, uh, individually on each property, you're gonna see it day one, right? Mm -hmm. And I have a YouTube video where I have I just break down the returns and on average on your property if you run it right you should be seeing a twenty to thirty percent return on your money day one. Right. Um, it's just a matter of getting more of that. So most mm -hmm. of my clients are able to save. You know, most of my clients are high paid doctors, lawyers, engineers, sure. etc., and they're able to save thirty to fifty grand a year. I mean, you think of it like they're putting a one rental property into every, in their portfolio every year. And then after a while, it starts to steamroll. They're getting two or three every single year. And it's a lot of, for all of those guys, it's like a matter of five to 10 years till they're financially free and they can fire their boss. <laughs> and 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 to your point, I mean, you're not in the in the you know premier markets. You're not looking for stuff there. So, I mean, if somebody was saying, "Well, I don't have a lot of money," but what 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 are the kind of things that you could get into? I mean, what's what kind of range of of prices could you pay for a small apartment somewhere? Yeah, I mean, I I advocate for getting like a turnkey rental out in the Midwest mm -hmm. or South. You know, at hundred thousand dollars, you're just going to need twenty grand for a down payment. Right. And look, I mean, there's a whole bunch of people selling courses on no money down. I'm just not that guy, man. Like, mm -hmm. this is real estate investing. We don't have money to invest. Sorry, man, you can't invest. You got a money problem. <laughs> <laughs> right, go go look up Dave Ramsey or Susie Orman. Right, <laughs> I, I'm I work with people who are responsible with their money and make a pretty good salary. And for those people, that there's there's these type of options. Right, Excellent. no tricks, no games. Good. All right. Well, all of Lane's information will be in his contributor bio down below. But before we go, Lane, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and how they can learn more. Yeah. Um. So I. I created my podcast five years ago out of a need that all my friends were asking me, how do I was buying all these properties sight unseen mm -hmm. and remotely? So I just made a podcast. Um, if you guys are getting started 
um, just look, you know, turnkey rental is a great way to kind of become a landlord with the training wheels, you know, property that's all built up for you, rehab, tenant in place. First eight podcasts are kind of all about that when I used to do that. But um, my, my email is lane at simple passive cash flow. And thanks for having me, John. Yeah, listen, this has been fascinating. And hopefully you come back again and uh, talk more about some of these, uh, some other ideas that you have as well, how you can generate passive income. For sure, man. All right. John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Mm-hmm.